Hi students, in today's video class we are going to discuss about high vacuum pumps. In our earlier sessions we have been dealing with four pumps or roughing pumps which are capable of producing low and medium vacuum that is pressures as low as 10 raised to minus 2 to 10 raised to minus 3 torr. Rotary vein pumps and sorption pumps were examples of four pumps. Now in our today's discussion on high vacuum pumps, we begin with the first category of high vacuum pump that is the kinetic vacuum pumps. In kinetic vacuum pump, the gas molecules which are to be removed from our vacuum chamber are given some kind of momentum and with this momentum the gas is continuously transferred from the inlet to the outlet that is in some using some method the gas molecules are transferred with some kind of momentum or some kind of momentum is imparted to the gas molecules and they are pushed from the inlet to the outlet outlet end of the pump now, the momentum transfer to the gas molecules is done using several methods. The first one is the entrainment of the gas molecules in a high speed vapor stream. That is, we create a high speed vapor stream of some oil or mercury or any other fluid of this manner. And the gas molecules coming from the vacuum chamber gets trapped in these vapors. They gain the momentum from these vapors and they are pushed out together with these vapors out of the pump. Another method by which the gas molecules are imparted with a momentum is by using some special mechanical moving parts. The pump will have some special moving parts by which the gas molecules from which the gas molecules will gain momentum and they will be pushed out the pump. The other high vacuum pumps that we have to discuss are about ion pumps and cryogenic pumps which we will be dealing in our later sessions. Now let us begin our today's discussion with the first kind of kinetic vacuum pump that is the diffusion pump. Now the diffusion pump consists of a cylindrical body this one fitted with a flanged inlet for the attachment of the system to be evacuated. At the bottom of the cylindrical body, there is an electrical heater for heating the pump oil which is used to produce the high speed pump vapors. Now the pump oil is usually um, fluids like DC704 and 705 which are phenyl siloxane compounds. Phenyl ethers as well as fluorinated polyphenyl ethers are also used as pump fluids. The upper two thirds of the body of the cylinder, the upper part of the cylinder is fitted with water cooling coils that is these are cooling coils so that the body of the cylinder remains cooled by the circulation of water. Then there is an outlet duct or a four line provided at the side of the lower pump body through which the gases which are pumped out are discharged outside by means of a mechanical four pump. Now the chamber to be evacuated is separated from the diffusion pump by means of a baffle valve. Now the most important part of the diffusion pump is this jet forming structure. The jet forming structure consists of concentric cylinders. Here there is a cylinder, the first cylinder, the second cylinder, 
the third cylinder so there are concentric cylinders which are partially capped they are partially all of them are partially capped and they have flared ends they are fitted with flared ends all along so that these flared ends help them to form umbrella like jets through which the pump fluid vapors the fluid vapors comes out at supersonic speeds so the this is the jet forming structure inside a diffusion pump the jet forming structure consists of concentric cylinders which are partially capped and they are provided with flared ends through which these oil vapors comes out in the form of jet at supersonic speeds now initially the chamber and the diffusion pump are independently roughed by closing the appropriate valve to the four pump both of them the pressure in both of them the pressure is brought down to nearly 10 raised to minus 1 torr before the high vacuum pump that is our diffusion pump starts working after the initial pumping on both sides that is at the vacuum chamber and at the pump side after the initial pumping or reduction of pressure is done the valve to the four pump is closed and this baffle valve is opened so that our vacuum chamber is in connection with the diffusion pump alone now let us come to the operation of the diffusion pump i hope the parts of the diffusion pump is clear to all of you once again it consists of a cylindrical body which is fitted with a flanged inlet over which the vacuum chamber is fitted then there is an electrical heater here to heat the pump boil and oil vapors are produced which comes out through these concentric cylinders in the form of supersonic jets now both sides the upper two thirds of the cylinder is provided with water cooling coils or these walls of the cylinder are cooled then there is a duct line or a four line which is connected to a backing pump to remove the pumped gases now let us come to the working now the pump fluid is heated by means of the electric heating coil and the vapor stream rises up the vapor stream rises up the jet forming structure and it comes out along these flared ends at supersonic speeds now what happens is at the same time the gas molecules from our vacuum chamber which is to be evacuated will come down will simply wander down and they get trapped with these oil vapors and they come out together with these jet of oil vapors the gas molecule together with the jet of these oil vapors together with these oil vapors comes out in the form of jets any gas molecules that tries to go upward will be pulled downward or forced downward again by the oil vapors and the oil vapor together with the uh, gas molecules coming from the vacuum vacuum chamber will come out in the form of jets of vapors and they will strike the body of the cylinder which is already cooled by the water cooling coils now the cooling coils will condense the oil vapors and the oil vapor will return to the reservoir in which the pump oil is kept and the gas molecules will be pumped out by using the backing pump by means of the backing pump now this is how the diffusion pump works i hope the working of the diffusion pump is clear to all of you once again i repeat that is the oil here the pump oil here gets heated by means of this electrical heater and the 
oil vapors will rise up the oil vapors which rises up will come out in the form of jets at supersonic speeds along these flared ends at the same time the gas molecules coming from the uh, chamber will just wander down and what happens is they gain an additional momentum because they get trans uh, trapped with these oil vapors and together both of them together that is the gas molecules together with the oil vapors come out as streams or jets along these flared ends at supersonic speeds once they hit the walls of the cylinder they get cooled and the oil vapors will condense and return back to the reservoir whereas the gas molecules will be pumped out with they are also coming down along the cylinder walls but they will be pumped by the backing pump so this is how a diffusion pump works now this graph shows the variation of pumping speed with the pressure for a diffusion pump we see that at higher pressures of nearly 1 atmosphere the pumping speed is quite low and as the pressure decreases it gains pumping speed the speed increases and from about 0.1 torr to nearly 10 raised to minus 5 torr the pumping speed remains a constant so this is the operational range that is the diffusion pump reduces the pressure from 0.1 torr to nearly 10 raised to minus 5 to 10 raised to minus 8 torr the action of the pump takes place at a constant pumping speed thus using the diffusion pumps pressures as low as nearly 10 raised to minus 8 torr can be attained so i hope the working of the diffusion pump is clear to all of you If you have any doubts please do contact thank you